Specialized Field Guides is an all-encompassing field guide course which gives any students huge um, experience. The idea is that they come with all-encompassing qualifications that they can hopefully uh, get into a job. The course that we offer is very, very comprehensive and also we consult with the lodgers themselves as to what they're looking for into their guides and based on that we include that on our courses. I love nature and I love working with people so that's actually where my interest grew. I just want to do something or find a particular career in nature. The students come to Bushwise I think not expecting the amount of knowledge they're going to get. So our modules include things anywhere from geology of the area, climate, mammals, mammal calls, animal behaviour. We do advanced 4x4s, we do presentation skills, we do rifle handling and shooting skills. Really nice that each week we got um, either one or a number of modules and then a test uh, weekly because then it did prepare us for the final for Gaza exam. You know, you're continually learning. You're, you're not just here in the classroom learning stuff. You're out and about in the bush. And you're not just chasing after the big five. You're stuffing the trees and the flowers and all the little bugs and everything. So that was really awesome because I'm a visual learner and I have to see things to understand them. I've learned a lot more than I thought I'd would be able to learn. On the campus, we're trying to make it as comfortable as possible for the students, a home away from home. Because it's not necessarily the, the easiest thing to come out as an international, but to have somewhere where you know that you'll be safe and with a lot of people that are doing the same thing with the same passion, I think for me that's what appealed me to it. It's not you on your own struggling to understand something or remember something. Everyone is helping everyone. We family, we become a family and with the trainers, what I love about them, they open, you're free to ask any question whenever you want. We're teaching them concepts and tips and tricks and knowledge that we've gained over years and years and years. And I have more belief in myself. That's, that's the thing that motivated me the most. Being a guide or working out research um, entities, a big element, if not the biggest element, is actually working with people. It's exciting because you get to tell people what they don't know it all and seeing the faces like so surprised that wow. And I think our main goal is to create teachers which will be able to go out and actually keep conservation going. It's one of the reasons why we have Bushwise. We try to not only train them as guides with a piece of paper, but for them to go out, be ambassadors um, and be responsible and set an example. A lot of jobs require you to have work experience um, and without that often you aren't able to get jobs so we offer the six month placement which enables people to work in the industry um, to really get their foot in the door. So they give you like a jump start into the industry. I can't wait now, I can't wait. I'm not looking forward to leaving this place but uh, that's when the real stuff begins. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. <laughs>
in your email inbox on Monday morning. So do feel free to share it or rewatch it if you feel like you've missed anything. Um, we'll also be answering your questions throughout this event. Uh, please do put them in the little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we'll do our best to get back to them as soon as possible. Um, and you will receive all the relevant details regarding today's uh, special offer via email right after this event. So please do keep your eyes on your inbox. Um, all right, well, that is me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. And without further ado, I'm going to welcome and hand over to Kim. Hi, Kim, are you there? Yes, hi, everyone. Can you hear me and see me okay? Hi, we can hear you. We can't see you at the moment. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Sorry, it seems to be a little bit slow. I'm sure it's part of the ESCOM <laughs> issue. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Shame. Thank you so much for joining us today. I will hand over to you. Go for it. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. Um, it is a presentation on our general courses and what we offer. Um, like Amanda said, there's a nice Q&A box where everyone can pop their questions if something comes up at the end or during the presentation. So, um, sorry, it is a little bit slow at the moment, so please do bear with us. Uh, internet in the bush is not always the best uh, at times. In the meantime, I'm just going to tell you what we will be chatting about while the page is loading. And um, we'll be chatting about all of our courses, uh, what they include, what you can expect and why you should do the Bushwise course, who does the Bushwise course, um, and uh, then we'll hear a little bit later from uh, some other students. Um, Amanda, I am having some internet issues at the moment, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can uh, revamp uh, my site, and can you share your screen in the meantime? Yes, Kim, I was going to say we, we can share our screen. We've got um, we've got Maria online managing tech behind the scenes. Um, so I will let Maria pull up your presentation for you, Kim, and then you're welcome to just say next slide when you need us to move on. If that's cool. Perfect. Let's do it that way. I'm sorry, everyone. These are the realities of living in the bush. That is Lucky okay. I don't even have load shedding now. Oh, my okay, goodness. We can okay. go to the first <laughs> slide. Thank you. Awesome. Kim, can you see the, can you keep, yes, can you see Yes, I the just slide? need us uh, to go to the first slide. There we go. So we're going to start with introducing our management team. Um, we had Sophie that was quite involved in the past, who's taken a backseat uh, for the first time in the last few months, but she remains the founder of Bushwise. Uh, then we have Eugene, who stepped up in the role of director, um, and he is kind of uh, steering the ship at this time. Then we have a uh, head of our online programs, Trevor, who you'll, who you'll be hearing from later, and his lovely partner, Sharon, who is heavily involved with the operations um, at the head office in Hoodsbreit. We then have myself, I am the sales and enrollment manager. So you probably have heard from me or uh, spoken to me on the phone or got some of my emails leading up to this uh, open day. I'll be helping you if you decide to book with us and preparing you for everything leading up to you starting the course. And then Tammy is in, uh, in charge of the online support beha behind the scenes regarding the online courses. Then we have John who has joined us as the assistant director who works quite closely with Eugene. And then Rwandi is the admin assistant who works quite closely with Sharon. Then on our South African Wildlife uh, College or campus grounds, you will meet Nico, who is our new head trainer. Darren and, and Francois won't be with us for much longer, but they are still with us for the next week or two. Um, Darren and Franchard have been trainers with us for quite a few years and they have be, they'll be moving on uh, to new opportunities. So I don't know if they'll be on campus when you start with us, 
um but we have new new trainers that are going to fill these spaces very very soon and then we have Sophie Barrett who is joining us too I haven't shared a picture with her or said much about her because she'll be joining us on this uh uh, open day so you'll see her face and be able to hear from her directly which is a, quite exciting then on our Mishlasha campus we have Vaughan who is our head trainer there we have Pioneer who's just joined us from the Southern African Wildlife College transferred to the Mishlasha campus and uh, Wayne who is one of the trainers as well Then we are currently looking to fill the spot for our social media marketing. In the meantime, Annie is covering that role and she is also our senior copywriter. You will hear her, her story, which is amazing um, and quite interesting uh, in the pre-recording she did for us later on as well. So we are very proud to say that we are one of the most, or actually the most comprehensive accredited field guiding course in South Africa, having done our homework and comparing what other courses have to offer. We are very proud of this um, uh, part of what we offer because what we offer has got a lot to do with what the lodges are looking for in terms of extra skills and qualifications they're looking into our field, um, to their field guides when they employ them. So we will talk about that a little bit later in this presentation as well. So we'll talk about our infield courses. Uh, next slide, please. We offer our flagship Course, which is our professional field guide course. It is a 23 week course. And um, the 50 week course just includes an extra six month work placement at one of our uh, partners that assists us with our students getting some working experience. Then we have just launched our new safari guiding course, which we're very excited about. This is 60 days and it's a condensed or compressed version of the long term professional field guiding course. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about our professional field guiding course now. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so this is going to be for anyone who's 18 or older. Students that are 21 can do the guiding placement. It includes all the modules that you'll need to do for the Fugasa Apprentice Field Guide qualification, as well as a lot of short courses that we will let you know a little bit later. Um, and of course, the practical training that goes with field guiding. So like I mentioned, it's 23 weeks and you can add a six month work placement or internship that makes up the 50 week course. It, uh, the structure is basically 70% practical and 30% um, theory. You also get the 12 week online course for free leading up to this. Um, and then of course, it includes the placement at the lodges. So who should be doing this course? So first of all, obviously somebody who is interested in field guiding or a similar wildlife kind of um, background or job that they want to do. Um, you should choose this course because uh, it is the most comprehensive and has the best value over our competitors. Um, you will get up to eight certificates. Five of those are nationally recognized. You get the free 12 week online course, which is currently valued at 17,550 Rand. Um, when we were able to publicly see the results from all long term training providers with Fugasa, we were the first and most highest average uh, out of all long term training providers for six years in a row, which we're very proud of and just shows the caliber and quality of our training. We go beyond just the Fagasa field guiding training. We train at a higher level. We include a whole bunch of extras, trying to make our graduates the most well-rounded and experienced apprentice field guides when it comes to uh, competitors in the industry. 
Um, and that gives our students a big advantage going into the guiding industry. Our students post COVID, uh, that were between 21 and 39 South Africans had a hundred percent employment rate, which we're very, very proud of. And of course we give guaranteed placements to all of our students if you pass the course with us. So our start dates are the 7th of January and the 8th of July annually. We've just started with our January uh, start dates, training 48 students, which we're very really proud of. It's our biggest cohort since we have started 17 years ago. It's our 17th anniversary, I think, this year, um, which we're very excited about. Uh, and our next course will then start on the 8th of July. Uh, we're already halfway fully booked for that one too. Um, there is a money back guarantee for South African students who do our 50 week course um, that uh, mean between 21 and 39, uh, which basically means that if you do not get a job off at this, within six months of finishing our course, we'll give you 50% um, of your money back. That's how sure we are that you'll get a job off either during your placement or after the course. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about our 60 day safari guiding course now. As I mentioned, this is a new course that we are offering. We're very excited about it. Our first one starts in April. Um, this is really a condensed version of our long term course, offering the same theory and practical training as the long term course, but excluding all the other little short courses um, that make up the uh, 23 week course but it does include extras which we think are the most important like track and sign first aid um, and reptile handling um, it is a 60 day course it suits those uh, that fit into the budget and maybe the time frame that we are offering um, this it really is an amazing opportunity to get the qualification in a very shorter uh, period of time and um, the international students don't need a study visa for this. They can come on a tourist visa. So it is 60 days. Uh, the structure is heavily um, on the side of practical training. We do do um, theory in between. And of course, uh, students will be writing the exam on this course. Uh, as long as it's fitting into the dates that uh, Bogasa has outlined. This course does not include a work placement. However, it does include the benefit of being part of the Bushwise alumni, and you'll have access to a Facebook page where we regularly advertise job opportunities. And like I said, uh, this course is for those that perhaps don't have the time or the budget to do the long-term long course. So uh, we have a start date in April the 10th. Our next one is then in July and September. And then next year we are including a January course. So there's four start dates every year, which is quite exciting. Gives you a bit of flexibility. Um, it will include the Fugasa um, curriculum, the theory and the practical. It's for anyone who is 18 or older. And then of course, if you do decide to do any extras, uh, there is availability to do certain add-ons with us, which I can give you details of later on if you are interested in this option. So there are quite a few uh, modules included in the Fugasa syllabus, 16 modules, uh, and we include an extra two on our side. Um, it includes classroom sessions, and remember, of course, I mentioned the 12 week online course that is included for free with both options, which is a massive advantage. It gives you a bit of base knowledge, a bit of a head start and an idea of what will be covered. It also lets you see what uh, subjects you maybe find a little bit more difficult and which ones you were really good at. So perhaps you can focus on those ones that you struggled with on the online course a little bit more on campus. There is a 75% pass mark that is needed to pass the theory. And some of those modules, uh, as you can see on the left, include things like ecology, taxonomy, mammals, and animal behavior, uh, to name a few.
so as I mentioned, here are some of the modules that we'll be covering. Um, I already mentioned ecology, taxonomy, mammals, um, but as you can see, it is quite broad and covers quite a lot uh, from fish to anthropods, have a little bit of geology. Um, we do go into quite a little bit of uh, South African history as well when it comes to historical human habitation, because a lot of the tourists that come to South Africa do want to know a little bit more about that and often ask questions about that. So the practical that we will cover on both courses, uh, we put students behind the wheel from the get-go. So obviously one of those requirements are that most of our students, or all of our students, let me rephrase, all of our students must have a driver's license. This is uh, will allow us to put you behind the wheel and get you that practical training uh, experience that you need from the get-go. Um, trainers will help uh, guide the students and teach them how to interpret the bush and uh, identify certain things, but not only that, how to tell a story. Um, because the, sh the, the tourists don't really want to, you know, get 100 facts on trees. They really want you to be engaging and tell a story about what they're actually seeing. Um, after all the training, you will be doing a practical assessment, uh, as in you take your own game drive, and hopefully you pass that and get the full uh, qualification. And the best part is that you are immersed in the bush on campus and during your training and um, spending every day in a bush environment. So as we mentioned, uh, you will get your apprentice uh, field guide in KF2 qualification, the theory and the practical. There is a trails guiding um, qualification, the theory on the 23 week program or course, as well as an optional 14 day practical add on where you can get your full qualification. These are CAFCETA recognized, that's the holding body um, that, that FAGASA falls under, and this is a nationally recognized qualification. You can also progress in these qualifications once you are in the field working as a field guide. Um, it requires logging hours as an apprentice field guide and um, writing a theoretical exam and then doing an assessment the same way the apprentice field guiding qualification is done. The only difference is you are doing it in a working environment, not at a course. Um, and you can go to field guide in care four and then professional field guide. And then, of course, apprentice trails guide and professional trails guide. So you can progress in the levels. It can take up to five to 10 years. The more you do, the more knowledgeable and experienced you are, the higher the salaries go and the better tips you can earn. And of course, the more sought after you are in those luxury five star lodges in, in and around Africa and around the world. So we mentioned some of the additional courses and qualifications and certificates you can gain on our course. This is based on the fact that a lot of the lodges that employ field guides want them to have these additional skills um, to just round up the experience and what you have to offer the guests. As a field guide, you do need a valid first aid qualification. So we do have a wilderness first aid course. We also find that social media is growing, of course, as a whole, but in the lodge and guiding industry as well. So we include a, a social media module. We do have a photography workshop as well. Uh, this is a benefit for those that are actually keen photographers, but also uh, how to manage and navigate photography tourists that come to South Africa for their opportunity to take amazing photos. We then do hospitality training, uh, specifically um, important for field guides. So hosting, how to uh, talk to your guests, how to read guests, um, wine and food pairing and things like that. Then we do uh, come across a lot of reptiles as field guides on the course and in live working environments. So a uh, reptile handling course is something we find extremely beneficial. Our students have just gone through that now, which was quite interesting. The students um, were educated on a whole bunch of things that they thought they knew, which is uh, always quite uh, exciting to learn new things. 
So have a look at our social media post recently. You'll see a lot of those kind of photos. And then students need to learn the basics of four by four driving and mechanics, how to change tires, things like that. Because as a field guide, you'll be put in tricky situations all the time and being able to get out of those yourself is an advantage for sure. We do astronomy training with celestial events. Ben Coley, a previous Bushwise student, field guide, and Bushwise trainer who started his own company. In fact, he wrote um, a qualification that is recognized through Fagasa for astronomy for guides. And then we do the Sasita rifle handling as well as the advanced rifle handling afterwards, which is a requirement for trails guiding qualifications. Then we do a track and sign um, qualification that is learning how to interpret different tracks and signs in the bush, as well as a trailing qualification, which is something new that we are offering which is got to do with being able to follow the tracks or signs of that particular animal and the outcome being that you find the animal. Then um, we do offer practical trails um, as an add-on with low file trails for those that want to pursue that side of the qualification that involves taking um, guests out on big five safaris on foot. The advanced rifle handling is something that students will be doing. We mentioned this briefly. It is um, something that is needed for trails guiding for sure. Uh, the good thing is, is that if you don't want to do trails guiding, you don't need to have this qualification, but it is included in our 23 year course and it is highly recommended. Um, and we do a lot of practice with this. So don't worry about that. Most of the time, the students that have never handled a gun are the best shot. So what can you expect in student life? What is it actually like to be a student with us on the Bushwise campus? Well, I can tell you, first of all, we do have a planner, but often uh, things can change on, uh, on a dime and no two days are ever the same. Um, a typical day would be waking up early in the morning, going on a safari or uh, attending a lecture. Brunch is then served at 11. Students then have a break in the afternoon where we encourage them to take the time to relax and study because it is quite an intense course. And then later on in the afternoon, there's either another lecture or game drive. Um, game drive is always a highlight for all the students. They get an idea of what it would feel like being a field guide in the actual working environment. And then lectures uh, are to do with all the modules and this will prepare the students for the test and exam that will come later in the course. So I already mentioned the typical day. So this is a quick outline of what you can expect. Um, if we are going quite uh, early out or if there are lectures in the morning um, and brunch is only at served at 11, don't worry. There is rusks and cereals and fruits and things available in the morning before you go. And you can take them uh, as snacks for you in the classroom and on game drives. But yeah, this is a typical planner. Obviously, when we're doing things like town trips and outings, this will slightly change. So we always ask students to have flexibility and um, understand that things can change from time to time. Also, based on weather, sometimes you can't always go out on game drive. So we do have various campuses, uh, part of Bushwise, which we're very proud of. The one campus is um, the Mashasha campus. Next slide, please. So we'll talk about the Southern African Wildlife uh, College first then. It is located near the Open Gate, close to the Kruger National Park. All the traversing is done on the um, the Greater Kruger National Park, which is amazing. We have access to the Kruger. Um, it is Big Five as well. And then we have Mishlashla Campus, which uh, is close to the Makalali Private Game Reserve. In fact, we have a campus opposite that. And our campus itself is a bush environment where animals um, come in and out of both campuses. 
The accommodation is quite basic. You'll be sharing with the roommates on the Southern African Wildlife Campus. It's tented accommodation with ensuite um, bathrooms. On the Mishasha campus, it's round bungalows. Um, but the amount of time that you spend in your rooms are quite minimal. Um, I'm sure uh, we can talk a little bit more about the um, facilities on campus now, but weekend activities for the long-term course, you do get Saturday as uh, Saturdays and Sundays off. For the 60-day course, there is very little downtime. You might get a day off here and there. So here are some pictures of our students in and around the campus. Um, so both campuses have got similar facilities in that they have a communal dining room, a communal kitchen, a communal classroom, um, a bry area or boma area where you can see bottom left. And um, the accommodation I already mentioned is very, very similar. Uh, the locations are really the only difference in the type of accommodation. The way we structure and run the course is exactly the same. We try to have groups of similar sizes and diversity in terms of race, gender, culture, age, background, things like that. So it's really, really always uh, nice to have a group of students from all work, walks of life from all around the world that are there for the same reason and have the same passion. Next slide, please. All right, so we're going to chat about why you should choose this course. So people often get bombarded with different course options and uh, course offerings and durations and everything. And um, the reason you should choose Bushwise is that we've been doing this for a very long time. Um, we've trained over a thousand students uh, in the last few years. Many of them are still in the industry. Our training team is some of the best guides in the industry that has been handpicked that have decided to contribute back to the industry by becoming trainers. And the team that we currently have have over 100 years experience. Um, and each one of them come with their own set of um, additional qualifications and specialities and training styles and methods. So you'll be mentored by these amazing people in the industry who uh, also continue to learn with you um, being on campus, asking all these amazing questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. So I just wanted to mention a few other things about oh. why you should choose Bushwise. We uh, mentioned it earlier, we are the most comprehensive course. We've had the highest pass rate average for six years in a row. Um, we offer flexible payment plan options and sometimes scholarship discounts of up to 50,000 Rand. We have an amazing support structure as from your first touch of talking to me throughout the preparation of coming, leading up to your start date, as well as during the course. And after the course, Amanda is our alumni manager and will always assist uh, you with sharing different opportunities that we have in the industry because many lodges reach out to us looking for our graduates because they know the type of training that they've had um so yes there's there's quite a few reasons and you know we are also quite transparent and honest about uh, answering difficult questions we will always be honest and truthful with you um but yeah we're very proud of what we offer and we continue to evolve and um, adapt our courses to the industry and based on feedback from our students. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. I appreciate you joining. I'll uh, hand it over to Amanda now, um, but I am available for questions that I'm sure I will be coming through. I have seen one or two in the chat box, so perhaps I can start with answering one or two of those. Awesome, thank you so much, Kim. Um, it's always wonderful learning more about Bushwise with you, so thank you so much. We have had a load of questions. Um, so I'm just gonna start um, asking you and um, feel free to enlighten us. Um, so our first question, I actually wanna go back to it, was an absolutely amazing question. I'm not sure if this person's name is Magic, Magic or Louise, um, but either one, uh, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, the question is, 
Um, they said, well, they say, my comment, uh, your comment 18 years or older, I'm 61. Conservation has always been a passion uh, my entire life, my, but my parents did not support my decision. I'm now at a stage in my life where I'm free to make a choice. What are my chances of getting into one of your programs? And would you recommend, uh, and what would you recommend? I'm fit, focused and energetic 60 year old. So there is no issue there. This is such a great question. And it's something that comes uh, um, is happening more and more, especially during and post COVID. We found a big shift uh, during COVID, towards the end and coming out of COVID, that many uh, people that were in uh, later ages, 40s, 50s, and 60s, I always call them my mature students because they are, at the end of the day, a student just like an 18 year old. Um, have now realized that they've been totally unhappy with what they've been doing in life. They've been discouraged from doing what they wanted to do. They haven't done what, they've, what they're passionate about and have decided to totally realign their life after COVID. So it's happening more and more. The answer is anybody who's 18 and older, up to 80, 90, who is fit, healthy, and has a passion for this industry can join our course. When it comes to employment, that's a whole different story. Obviously, students that are older will have a big disadvantage because they're competing with students that are in their 20s and 30s entering the industry. So it would be the same answer as any other industry. Uh, that would be a disadvantage. The other thing is the industry itself is quite young because of the salary packages that avoid them or that give us a bit of a struggle with getting home loans and things like that. So generally, a lot of the uh, field guides are younger um, you're working in remote areas far away uh, from schools and family and things like that. So it's difficult to start a family, start this industry with a family um, and things like that. Uh, and then, yeah, so there's various factors that make this industry quite young. So at the end of the day, I can never guarantee employment for anyone um, who's older than 39 uh, after doing our course, it's impossible for me to guarantee that because of those reasons. But anybody can join our course. And of course, we are quite connected in the industry and have lots of um, people that we can reach out to, to communicate with them about the students that we have on campuses at that time, and do the best we can to try and find placements for our students, regardless of their age. And if we are able to, we make those arrangements and send them on their way. But yeah, it is very difficult. We're very transparent about that. We're not going to make false promises. Being 61 is going to be extremely difficult for you to break into this industry as an apprentice field guide. But whatever experience you have prior to this, for example, if you have been in management, tourism, hospitality, operations, things like that, that could be an, an advantage for you. Some of the smaller lodges also prefer hiring um, more mature students or um, staff because they come with a little bit more responsibility, working experience and reliability where they are put into management roles quite early on. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. I, I just love hearing questions like that um, and stories like that. People just kind of taking charge of their own life and making changes when they feel like it's it's important to do that. So um, great question. Thank you so much. Uh, next question is from Bradley, who says, hi, guys and girls, which NQF level is required to uh, to take and assist researchers out into the field? Oh, that I cannot answer. Um, I don't know if I understand the answer correctly. Um, the only requirement to book the course is matric. The qualification that you gain on the course is an NQF2. The qualifications the trainers require to take students out in the field is professional field guide level, which is level five, four, five, five, sorry, level five. I hope that answers my, your question. If that's not what you were looking for, or uh, please rephrase and we're happy to answer it again. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, right, we have another question from um, Victoria. I actually gave Victoria a little bit of an answer, but um, Kim would love to hear your input as well. Victoria wanted to know if we offer courses in rehabilitation for animals too. No, and this is something that is becoming up more and more. And I think it's because people are so conscious of the fact that so much uh, terrible things are happening to animals uh, with the population explosion, climate change, uh, pollution, things like that. So 
I think um, also documentaries like Blood Lions and things like that have put a spotlight on the input that we need to put in to animal care and rehabilitation. So we do not offer a course uh, in this line and there are very few courses offered in this um, field. I've seen one or two short courses after Googling um, animal care courses, um, basic animal um, welfare courses. Uh, obviously, veterinary um, courses would be directly involved with caring of an animal and things like that. But yeah, we don't offer any courses good like finding an accredited course. Um, I haven't been able to find any that I would be putting out there and recommending to people that are interested in this. Um, but yeah, if you do look up courses for animal care, animal welfare, animal rehabilitation, make sure that it is a reputable company, first of all, that they are actually only taking wild animals that have been injured, poisoned, and that require rehabilitation to be released in the wild later on. And thirdly, make sure that qualification is accredited or recognized and that the practical um, kind of training that you're going to be receiving on the ground is going to be worth putting on your CV. That would be my advice. We might look at that in the future. Who knows? I don't even know if GVI has got that on their cards, but um, we'll see. It is coming up more and more often. So something worth looking into, I'm sure. Awesome. Great answer. Yes. I also, I commented on GVI uh, with, with regard to GVI. Just to clarify um, that GVI don't offer courses where they offer programs. Um, so if you wanted to go and volunteer and work with or work in conservation with animals, reintegrating them into the wild or working kind of working with uh, on conservation efforts um, with them just to get some practical experience, GVI would be a good bet. If you are specifically looking yes. for a course and something accredited, um, We'll, we'll get back to you if and when we hear um, of some or we start our own. Um, but yeah, great, great. We, yeah, I think that is something that is going to be coming up uh, with discussions in management because we are looking to, um, you know, do more offerings and make sure that they're in line with the type of quality and professionalism that we're really offering that are accredited. So we won't just do a quick little course in that either. It would be something that is well thought out and considered. Um, but yeah, please, GVI offers amazing programs on the ground that have got to do with this. So that is something we can do. I also just wanted to mention that the skills that you learn on our course uh, would be beneficial to that line of work anyway, in terms of what you'll be learning on our courses. And one of our, um, a few of our placement options are animal care and rehabilitation for our under 21 specifically. So we do have placement options in that line. And then we do have some alumni who have either started their own programs or gone and worked permanently in programs that have got to do with animal care and rehabilitation. One person who particularly sticks out to me was an Australian uh, alumni who uh, went and started her own animal rehabilitation center in Australia. Oh my gosh, amazing. Awesome. Um, well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what, what evolves and develops in that space. So thank you, Victoria, for your question. Uh, we got a question from Fionn here, um, who says, thank you so much for today. You're most welcome. I was just wondering which campus the 60 Day Safari Guide course would be on. Thank you. Oh, that's a great question. So I actually can't confirm that at the moment. Um, at this stage, we're looking at the Mishlashla campus. Um, just based on our current numbers and the students on campus now for the April start dates. In terms of numbers in July for our courses, that will determine which other campus we'll be using for the 60 day course. But at this stage, it looks like the Mishlasha campus. Good to know. Thanks, Kim. Then we have a question from Taylor who says, what could an 18 year old attendee do after the six month course before becoming eligible for the PDP qualification? Great question. Now, this is something that comes up again and again and again. And it is something I'll be honest with you about. The industry is very frustrated about it. All the training providers and the field guiding industry, it's such because this law is actually um, outlined by the Department of Transport. It's got nothing to do with Fagasa, CAFCETA, the, the industry in terms of that side. And it is a requirement that 21-year-olds need to take paying guests on safari outlined by the department. This means that any uh, person who benefits financially from taking something on your vehicle, guests, have to have a PDP. And also 
uh, taking um, those people on national roads. So there's a bit of a gray area. So we do have what we refer to as conservation internships or work placements for our under 21s and non-guiding placements. And those would be things that would not require them to have their PDP uh, to take the guests on drive. And it would involve at least getting some working experience and exposure to any kind of wildlife conservation related career. So the type of placements that we have for our 21s would be animal care, rehabilitation, volunteering, research, um, reserve management, um, anti-poaching, ecotourism, hospitality, those kind of things. There are far and few between. Um, we do have regular placement partners that do take our under 21s. Some lodges have taken our under 21s and put them in a tracker seat and put them behind the scenes in lodges pending them turning 21 to get their PDPs. So um, students that are 18, 19 and 20 need to make a choice. They can come and do our course under 21, do an under 21 placement and see what kind of opportunities um, come from there. And of course, remember, you'll still have the access to the alumni platform with regular job opportunities, or they can go study something. They can go overseas, go earn some money, travel, get a job and start saving up and choose to do our course when they are 20, turning 21. With the benefit of that is they qualify then for that guaranteed uh, employment, um, being 21 if they do our 50 week course. Great, thank you, Kim. Uh, I'm just watching the questions roll and they just, they are not stopping. Um, we, are little, we are a little bit over time, so I'm gonna ask one more question, um, but please do keep your questions coming. We'll hop on to, um, to, to them kind of after our next next um i was going to say next course next talk um and continue answering them kind of as we go so please don't go anywhere uh, my last question before i hand over to sophie is from shaley who says thank you so much for all this information could we find out about the price packages on the different courses and if you guys offer sponsorships or sponsorship or bursaries yeah so all of our rates are advertised on our website under the specific course under the tab costs and dates if you want um, prices on anything else, you can email me and we do not offer full learnerships or bursaries. We do offer partial scholarship discounts from time to time up to 50,000 Rand. And there is a special scholarship discount for everyone who's joining this um, uh, webinar, which uh, Amanda will share with you at the end. Great, thank you so much, Kim. Um, awesome, yes, just to, to, to wrap up there what Kim was saying, we will be sending out an email at the end of this event, um, which should land in all of your inboxes at 6 p.m. South African time, um, Not depending on where in the world you are, it'll be different, um, but at the end of this event, containing all the information that you need in terms of how to register, sign up, and book a Bushwise program. Um, as Kim mentioned, we do have a, a special offer available to everyone who has attended today. Um, so uh, do keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, thank you so much, Kim. Please don't go anywhere because we, we've got a load of questions to answer. So um, yeah, it would be great if we could hop back on when when um, when we're done with our next talk. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And now I'm going to hand over to Sophie. So Sophie Barrett is uh, an ex Bushwise student, current Bushwise alumnus um, and she is joining us today um, both as an alumnus and as a Bushwise staff member. She has recently been um, hired and joined the team. So Sophie, it's wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. I can see you. Yes, you're all there. Awesome. Hi, Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Yeah, so guys, I'm going to start out by saying um, I'm having major, major internet issues. I am uh, in the depths of the bush. So at the moment, I seem to be able to be on for about five or six minutes at a time. If I do disappear, please bear with me. It is just taking a little while to reconnect, but I will be coming back. Um, so Amanda, if you're happy, whilst I've got signal, I'm probably just going to push through and try and um, and get some of the presentation done. Go for it. So that <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. It's not too crazy when I disappear. Okay, so hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all or in each year, I guess, is the, is the most appropriate thing to say. Um, as Amanda said, I am one of the Bushwise alumnus. So I did a course uh, about five years ago now. Um, and I'm here to talk to you um, a little bit about some of my experiences. Um, so Maria, if you're able to just pop onto the next slide, that'd be great. Um, so I thought I'd start off 
the presentation by letting you know a little, little bit about who I am. It's always nice to have a bit of background about who's, who's busy speaking to you. Um, so my name is Sophie. As I said, I did a course about five years ago. I attended the 50-week course, so I did the 23-week up, uh, and then I went on and did a six-month work placement. Um, I'm also a, well, Pangolin Monitor, Pangolin Project Coordinator, um, and a charity assistant for one of our local conservation organizations that's known as Rhino Revolution. Um, and then most recently, I was head guide at the lodge um, that I've been working at with a team of nine other um, safari members that were uh, mine to manage and, <laughs> and try and usher around. Um, and then as Amanda mentioned, um, a couple of weeks ago, I've actually just finally joined Bushwise as a new Bushwise trainer. So I've come uh, full circle, so to speak. Uh, Maria, when you're ready, the next slide would be great. Thank you. So um, in terms of why did I choose Bushwise? my story was a little bit unusual so i had actually already done a uh, field guiding course i'd already the, the, those days it was called a level one but now it's an apprentice field guide so i was already a qualified apprentice field guide um the school that i went to to do my course uh was not very focused on all of the additional qualifications and licenses that you need like kim was mentioning the pdp is a big one um in order to be able to guide they were very much focused on the knowledge that's required to be able to pass the actual FGASA assessment and getting you your FGASA certification. So I'd done that back in 2015. Um, and then I'd done a few years of guiding of, I did a lot of, um, of walking guiding. So walking a second rifle. Uh, and then I did what's known as shotgun guiding. So I was basically sitting in the passenger seat instead of the driver's seat. Uh, and I was doing all of the talking um, to the guests. So that was quite fun. Um, but quite frustrating at the same time. So you'll find that there's many, many different ways of, uh, of guiding, different guiding styles. Uh, and the more time you spend in the bush, the more you start to develop your own individual style. Um, different things that you notice that you might want to stop for, different ways that you'll position the vehicle, you'll, at times when you'll be turning the vehicle on and off. Um, and it starts to get really frustrating that I wasn't able to be behind the driver's seat. So I did some research and then I found Bushwise and my main reason for attending Bushwise um, was the comprehensive qualifications that were offered. The fact that it would enable me to get all of my actual guiding licenses um, sorted and, and settled and the work placement. So it's all very well and good getting your apprentice field guide qualification, um, but especially as an international, in order to get into the industry, you need to start getting a name for yourself. Um, whilst I had a, had a name for myself, I've been working in Pilonsburg, I've been working in the Kassiri, um, it was sort of well known that I was not going to be legally allowed to do the, the driving side of things. Ooh. Sophie, are you there? I feel like we may have lost Sophie temporarily. Um, I feel like she might rejoin though. Okay, we have action. In the meantime, Kim, are you there? Should we, should we, um, should we respond? I to am, I am here and I'm furiously typing, typing my answers to all the other questions that came in. So it would a good, be a good chance to answer other questions while we wait for Sophie to rejoin us. I'm glad I'm not the only one Guys, having I am internet, actually internet issues. Yay. Okay, Sophie, I'll hand it back over to you. <laughs> Sorry, I know, sorry guys, this is going to be slightly hectic, but but just bear with me. Um, but yeah, one of my major, major reasons for choosing Bushwise was um, the quality of the training, um, the comprehensive nature of the qualifications, and the fact that it was a foot in the door of the, the guiding industry. So that's why I actually chose Bushwise itself. Um, so Maria, whilst we have me, let's go on and try and crack some of the most important stuff here, which is the actual Bushwise experience. What is it like to be a student at Bushwise? Um, so that's the next slide, please. So I was, as I said, I attended the 50 week course uh, and I was based on the Mishlashla campus. Um, you can see some of the images on the, on the screen. These are all from my student days. Um, they, we've got some of the sundowners from the drives, we've got some of the track and sign element, a couple of my colleagues looking extremely pleased with their drink stop setup. Oh, we've gone one, one slide too far. Um, we've got some of the uh, frogging qualifications that we did, so the, the studies with the frogging. Um, and then we've got some um, of the just general group life. 
So what you'll see, Maria, are we able just to go back one slide? Um, but what you'll see once the slide comes back on is that very, very quickly, thank you so much, uh, very, very quickly, the students became like family. Uh, the trainers, I think, <laughs> became like very stressed parents with this sort of very unruly bunch of, uh, of children that were suddenly theirs to, um, to manage. Um, but certainly five years on, some of the friends that I made on that course are still some of my closest friends to date. Um, I see them, I keep up with them on a very regular basis. Um, so one thing that I can promise you is that if you do the Bushwise course, whatever length course you end up on, it is going to be one of the most memorable experiences um, of your life. Now, in terms of the sort of things that you learn, I'd obviously been already practicing as a guide, but the variety of the trainers that you get through the Bushwise experience, everybody has different levels of interest, different focuses, um, and the learning experience was huge. You'll find when you work as a field guide, you can never know everything. Um, and so the, it was a joy to spend the six months really refreshing the knowledge, building on what I already knew. As Kim mentioned, you learn to your Fagaza level and then quite considerably beyond that. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to get your Fagaza qualification and then an additional Bushwise qualification, which says, yeah, we certify that you've, you've met our higher standards um, that we actually are very proud to, to uphold. Um, yeah, and so that I think is probably um, most of the things you can see nicely. I think pictures generally say more than words. Um, you can see it was good fun, even with the first aid qualifications. It was a, a learning experience, which was combined with a lot of laughter um, and the knowledge, I think, that when you're enjoying yourself, it tends to stick uh, a lot better than, than otherwise. Um, so, Maria, I think we're ready for the, the next slide, if you are. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm racing through this because my internet signal seems to drop every few minutes. Um, so at least you can have a little bit of the, uh, the content before I disappear again. Uh, Maria, if you're able to just switch to that next slide for me. Lovely stuff. So what happened after Bushwise? What is my life? What, was my, what did my career look like after that? Um, the images that are on this side are a combination of um, the work from the placement venue. So I did the six month placement and I very much treated my six month placement like a six month job interview. When I went through for my initial placement interview, I was careful to discuss with the, with the venue the, the possibility of uh, becoming a permanent member of the team. You know, I was interested, not in just a bit of experience, but I really wanted somewhere that if I could impress them, um, there would be space for me on their team. Um, I worked my backside off for six months, um, got on really, really well with the team, with the owner, with the managers, um, and was offered a full-time position at the end of my placement. I actually then spent four and a half years at my placement venue, during which time I went from uh, an apprentice um, field guide with my backup trails, apprentice trails guide, to being a fully qualified lead trails. Um, and I've now, I'm just waiting to sit my practical for my professional field guide, which is the top level of field guiding qualification. I went from guide to assistant head guide to head guide. Uh, and finished my time there managing the, the safari team, as I mentioned, which was a, a team of 10. Um, some of the images that you can see in the bottom left of this of image section, um, those ones are uh, some of my work that I got involved in with the local conservation organization, which I found um, through the reserve that I was actually working I think we may have lost Sophie again um, while, while we wait for her to rejoin. Um, Kim, are you there? I am indeed. Awesome. I am actually busy chatting with Carmen. Um, and Carmen, oh, would, yes, Carmen would like to know, um, what is the possibility of a more mature student getting a placement um, with uh, placement partners who work in the um, animal rehabilitation um, slash conservation, yes, co slash conservation space. Um, are all of our students who pass the course guaranteed a placement if they want that placement? And I guess how is there space for um, a more mature student specifically on the rehabilitation um, placement programs? So the answers to all of those is yes, yes, and yes. Um, but it is extremely important that you understand that our course, our qualifications and our training is all towards field guiding and not conservation, animal care or rehabilitation. 
this is a constant um, bit of confusion that comes in here. So we do have those kind of placements. Like I mentioned before, they're far and few between and not guaranteed. We do placements in this kind of a line with places like Sia Funda, um, Wildlife Act. We've done placements with uh, Leo Africa before as well as Cradle of Humankind. So yes, but uh, I see Sophie's back. So I'm gonna hand over back to her quickly. Great, thanks Kim and thanks <laughs> Sophie, hot potato, over to you. <laughs> I know, quick. <laughs> Sorry, guys. As I said, it's quite frustrating at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so what I was saying was um, I've been heavily involved with working for one of our local conservation organizations, which has been a fantastic balance with the, the field guiding. So, a lot of you are asking questions how can you get involved with animal rehabilitation? How can you get involved with conservation? Um, the opportunities are there, the doors are there to be opened, but you need to make them. So, um, I found this organization. I loved the work that it did. I approached them. I looked for what seemed to me to be a gap in, in what their requirements were. I, I found a gap. I went to them and said, listen, guys, I see you've got no one who's currently manning any of your wild pangolin operations. Um, let me be that person for you. So the opportunities can be pretty incredible. Bottom right hand side of the screen, that's me having the time of my life in a micro light flight. Um, if you do well in this industry, then the lodges tend to reward you for it. So that's a little bit about um, my life, and my, my recent career. Uh, Maria, whilst, whilst we have me, maybe we can just hop onto the, the next slide. And then, so what does the future hold? Now, as Amanda's mentioned, as I've mentioned, I've just joined Bushwise as a staff member, uh, which is really exciting. Um, so I'm looking forward to helping to mould the next generation of, of field guides and budding conservationists. Um, who knows? Who knows where the where the future goes after that? But yeah, for the next number of years, I'm really looking forward to uh, a different set of challenges, a different way of sh of sharing my knowledge, and a different way of creating um, the ambassadors for nature that we that we send out into the field. Um, and then I think the next slide is just a question of, does anybody have any questions that are directed about the Bushwise experience, the student experience, um, and, or any of the, the placement experience that I personally had? So Sophie, we haven't had um, any questions specifically on those matters, but I do have a question that I would love to ask you that has come through. Um, I think Kim has answered it briefly, but I feel like you would be a good person to ask as well. What kind of careers can you pursue if you do a Bushwise course? Oh dear, we may have lost <laughs> Sophie again. Uh, That's she's okay. Just... Um, I'm here to answer that. And I think it is a great question. Um, so I wanted to be very clear again, because uh, this comes up again and again. So the type of course we offer, the qualifications gained, and the work placements that we offer is for field guiding. Now, there are a lot of students that get conservation, uh, wildlife related diplomas, degrees, and um, things like that, that want to do our courses for practical training on the ground, because it is very, very relevant. They're getting hands-on experience. They're learning general things that they would apply to those careers going forward. Um, another thing that uh, tends to happen is that those that are interested in nature conservation, ecology, zoology, lodge management, hospitality, operations, things like that, start off at as field guides because like Sophie mentioned, once you are there on the ground, you are exposed and have the opportunity to have a lot of things um, happen on the game reserve that you're working on. Um, so that tends to open different doors to you while you're there. I always give this as an example, but it's because I've seen it firsthand and I'm with him. It's my husband. He started off as a field guide. He got an opportunity through working with these people and meeting them for environmental management. He then got a job as a reserve manager for eight years without any other qualifications other than being extremely good with his hands and hands on and very good with staff. And then from there going directly into uh, anti-poaching um, and he is now an anti-poaching manager. He's done this over the last 20 years without any tertiary education or diploma or um, degree. And this was purely through starting as a field guide and having opportunities on all those different game reserves that he's worked. He has not actively looked for a job for 20 years, which I still think is unbelievable. 
That that is incredible in this day and age. That is incredible. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kim. Um, I also just wanted to add that while we do at Bushwise train you specifically to be a field guide, um, you'll hear now um, in Annie's talk how um, doing uh, these types of courses she did her for Gaza um, has helped her. Um, basically land a job working in social media and copywriting um, for Bushwise, where she gets to write about her passions. Um, and she has also recently been promoted. So um, so it's going really well for her. So it really is one of those things where it's, I think it's never going to be a waste because if this is something you are passionate about and you enjoy, um, the chances are it's going to align with where you end up down the line in one, one way or another. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, I'm going to take a moment to hand over to um, Annie, who's not here with us, but will be joining us in uh, video format. Um, she's very sad that she couldn't be here today, but unfortunately she is away this weekend with absolutely zero reception. Um, so she pre-recorded her talk for us just because her story is so phenomenal um, and absolutely fascinating. Annie is from the US and she is going to be speaking us, to us today about her conservation um, kind of journey slash career in, in being a um, uh, an American um, citizen from, from the US and coming to South Africa and starting a, a career in conservation over here. Um, and just with regard to kind of the logistics around that. So we're gonna play Annie's video and then we'll answer a few more questions afterwards. Hello everybody. Um, first of all, I wanna apologize for not being there live today. Um, unfortunately, I'm out of contact in the Berg, uh, but it's so exciting to be able to share my story with some hopefully future field guides. Um, my name is Annie Dupree, and I am originally from the United States, uh, but I've lived in South Africa for about eight years now, um, definitely call it home now. And I am super passionate about conservation and wildlife and I'm currently a writer with Bushwise. Um, I've got a, a story to share with you guys. And I, although I'm not there now, uh, Amanda will be sharing my contact information for anyone who's interested in speaking to someone who also came from abroad to work in conservation in South Africa or anyone who's interested in working as a field guide or getting into this industry, um, because it's something that I, I have a bit of experience with and I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start by sharing my screen. So hopefully you can see this. Um, so this is a picture of me, as you can see, um, and in the background are some wild dogs. So I'm gonna be sharing my experience coming from the States and getting involved in conservation in South Africa. And it is, has been quite an interesting journey. Um, my contact information is actually on the screen here. So my email address is at the bottom, annie.dupree at gviprograms.com. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get going. Okay, so who am I? By the way, all these photos are ones that I've taken during my time in South Africa. Um, and how did I end up here? So I, have an undergraduate degree in political science, a master's in international relations, and a lot of experience working in policy and government. Um, and I definitely at the outset thought that my career would progress in your typical entry level job in policy, you know, make your way, do grunt work and make your way up the up the ladder, so to speak, to eventually get to the position that I thought I'd want to be in, you know, full-time career working in an office possibly. And I don't know why I thought that because to be frank, I spent all my time as a kid outside um, in the mud, getting dirty, spending time around wildlife and interested in nature. But um, as many of you might know, um, there's a lot of pressure to get into a full-time job that's behind a desk. Um, and a lot of people choose that and that's totally fine. But Think for those of us that are here we want something else we want to be outside we want to connect with nature we want to have that um that relationship with the outdoors and turn the passion that we have into our career hopefully um so that was this this career progression that i thought i would follow is not exactly how my life ended up going it really went <laughs> quite a bit more wonky than that um i have i've worked in, in a lot of different roles and sometimes it feels like, 
you know, spinning around a little bit trying to figure out where I want to be. Um, but I think that's totally okay. So I am 34 years old. Um, and since I've been legally allowed to work, which is probably about 20 years, um, you know, start in your teens doing little jobs in the States when I was a kid, um, I've done a lot of different things. <laughs> um, so if, if there is a moment to pause and, and look at all of these, um, I'll say that there, there probably are some common threads in interest in wildlife and being outside and conservation. But like I said, I, I studied political science and international relations. So, um, you know, while I was a high school, I was a camp counselor and a baker and I worked at an outdoor store and um, was an instructor for different outdoor activities. But then as I started to develop my professional career, I got into things like research, um, fundraising, writing, volunteering, editing, project management. Um, and I didn't follow a traditional career path at all in that sense. So some of these roles were six months, some of them were a year, some of them were even shorter than that. I did a lot of freelancing. Um, most of this was in the States but then I got opportunities to start coming over to South Africa and I came once as a student in 20 or 2008, um, went back to the States, but just always had this itch to live and travel in South Africa. Um, so you can see as things progressed, I had a little more experience in wildlife, um, was very fortunate to work in wildlife trade and crime research, um, which is quite an interesting industry. And if anyone's interested in both the legal and illegal trade of wildlife, um, which is quite a controversial topic. If anyone has any kind of interest in that, I'm also very happy to chat about it. So you can reach out to me at my email address. Um, and then I, as you saw at the picture at the beginning, eventually got into wild dog research as well. Um, but I'll, I'll go step by step with this. So in 2019, I had been living in South Africa for four years and had been working as a freelancer again, slowly getting into the wildlife side of things, but really based in my policy research, um, my policy work. And I decided that I was tired of trying to make things work for me in a normal office job, um, even with the freelancing and, and slowly getting into the wildlife research. I still miss the feeling of being outside and being around wildlife and doing hands-on conservation, because um, I had done a little bit of that when I was younger, but again, mainly just for fun. So I decided that I wanted to do a Fagasa course. And some of you might have this, um, have, be in the same um, situation as me where you've worked in, you know, in the world in a more traditional sort of role for however many years, and you're deciding that you know, you're tired of doing that. You don't wanna be behind a desk anymore and you wanted to, you wanna get outside and, and experience conservation firsthand. And that was exactly where I felt uh, I was in 2019. And so I did a lot of research and I found a course that was 55 days, similar to the 60 day course that Bushwise offers now. Um, and I just decided, heck, I'm gonna go do it. Um, I was living in Johannesburg at the time and I drove the five hours over to Hoodsprite and I jumped into this course for two months. Um, and it was, it was quite a bold thing. I think a lot of times, you know, we living in comfort in cities or, um, in more urban areas, it's hard to imagine going and spending two months living in a tent or living you know, in a camp in the bush, but it is honestly one of the best things. I think it's probably been one of the most life-changing experiences I've ever had. Um, I, I didn't really know why I wanted to become a field guide. I didn't want to actually, I didn't know if I was going to actually guide, but I knew I wanted to spend time in the field seeing what you could see in two months by living in the bush because there's really nothing compared to that. For those of you who've been on safari for a couple of days in the past, you know it's incredible. Now just multiply that by you know thousands as far as the experience goes because there's almost no separating you from the bush when you live there for that much time. Uh, the two months is the shortest in-person course that we currently offer at Bushwise, but the six month one, the 12 month one is just, a really incredible way to kickstart a, just the most rewarding career I think that you can actually have. So why did I want to become a field guide? I wanted to expand my mind, expand my mind and really dive into something unique in South Africa's wildlife. So I did that, I graduated, and then um, 
and then I went back to sort of the real world, as it were, I went back to Johannesburg. And like I said, I didn't think I was going to become a guide, but it did open up some incredible opportunities to me. It, you know, during 60 days, you, you really bond with the people that you're on a course like this with. You've got something so critically in common, and that's the passion for, for wildlife and, and conservation. And you also come from different places around the world. So you're exposing yourself to different viewpoints and different critical ways of thinking, um, you know, critical viewpoints, different skills, different backgrounds, different, um, different ways of thinking about things. And it's just, it's definitely one of the most eye-opening ways to enter this industry is to spend time with people of different backgrounds and doing this kind of course with experts training you as well. I mean, I, I didn't expect to know nearly as much as I did in just 60 days. And at the point, at that point in time, I probably would have recognized three bird calls. And by the end of 60 days, I could recognize a minimum of a hundred bird calls. And, you know, you start to recognize different patterns as well. And you just develop interests that you never thought you would. Uh, and that opportunity also doing the Fagasa course also helped me get my next job in my long list of jobs in my career, which was to start working with the Endangered Wildlife Trust, managing their wildlife and trade program. Like I said, a very complicated and at times controversial topic, but uh, very important, especially in a country that has huge wildlife resources. And so I managed that program for about a year before, you know, we, well, before the country went into COVID lockdown, and I'll get into that next. But the main thing I want to say out of that is that I just kept saying yes to the opportunities that popped up in front of me after doing my Fagasa course. And I'll say that the Fagasa, the field guiding world is very small. So if you get into this and you start to meet people, if you enjoy networking and field guiding really is probably, it's a lot more about people than it is about animals, to be honest, because this is, you know, you're, you're guiding people, you're working in an industry that's very close knit. It's, it's really a, an opportunity to develop incredible social and people skills as well as wildlife and knowledge skills. Um, but then 2020 again, we went into lockdown and COVID. And so I had to go back to the United States and I took those skills that I had learned as a Fagasa guide and I translated it into being a tour guide doing ocean kayaking in Maine. Which, if any of you have ever been to the Northeast of the United States, Maine and Acadia National Park and Bar Harbor, is really one of the most beautiful places in the United States. And it's totally different, right? I mean, the skills that you wouldn't think that the skills you would get from learning how to guide in an area with big five, you know, you're driving game viewers around where there's lions and leopards and elephants to paddling a kayak with a group of 12 people in tandem kayaks behind you looking for bald eagles and seals. But the skills that you get from guiding are actually so easy to translate into other jobs that even if all you are doing is coming over and doing a sabbatical or a gap year and spending two months or six months learning how to become a Fagasa guide, if all you do is, is that and then you go home to do something completely different, those skills are going to make you more employable at any role. Because again, they get to those social skills, the storytelling skills, the kinds of things that guides need to excel, which Bushwise really focuses on. And these Fagasa courses are hugely valuable for any career you want to take that involves being people forward, um, working in conservation. I mean, honestly, the, the kinds of people who come on courses like this who go back and do something else, they do all different kinds of careers. It's just a really great way to gain skills and, and develop yourself. Uh, but I couldn't stay away. I had to come back from the States. So one of the other things that I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm very passionate about is wildlife photography. And it's always just been a way that I've connected with animals um, and I've been able to express myself in conservation and my passion. Um, so these are just photos that I've taken all over, all over South Africa, Southern Africa. And I sit there and look through my photos when I'm back in the States and just realize that I have this calling to be back here and had to come back. Um, and, and so I came back and I continued my relationship working with the Endangered Wildlife Trust, but I also decided I actually really wanted to get a additional degree, which is in resource conservation biology at the University of Witzwatersrand in Johannesburg. And so I'm still working on that. That's sort of a part-time thing that I'm doing while I, I work for Bushwise. 
and I jokingly call myself a lifelong academic, but if you if you're someone who's interested in becoming a guide, you'll realize quickly that there's no such thing as getting to the very peak, the very top in this industry. If you enjoy learning and you enjoy being curious about the world, that's where people really shine in, uh, in field guiding because nature is always going to surprise you. And animals are always going to do something that completely throws us, uh, you know, flips things upside down and throws the book out the window. I mean, I, I'm studying wild dogs in my master's right now. We're looking at the way dogs interact with lions and the decisions they make around where to den and how to raise their pups and what areas to avoid and what habitats to capitalize on. And we've got books that tell us what we expect to see. And often the dogs just say they don't really feel like following the rules and they do something completely different. And every time you go into the bush, there's an opportunity to see something that totally changes the way we think about things uh, or observe something you've never seen before or interact with a guide who's done you know, their 10,000 hours and still has so much more to learn. And it's just such an eye-opening thing. I think it's so exciting. So um, so that's what I did. I went ahead and started with this wild dog research. And it's, it's going to be a couple of years. It's meant to be a year-long program, but I might stretch it a bit because it's just fun. And then, of course, in the rest of my time, I get to work for Bushwise, which is just an incredible experience to keep my my interest in talking about wildlife and conservation active and alive and i that's i'm getting i think to about 15 minutes of my story which is a long time for you to listen to me talk and i wish i could actually engage and, and ask answer questions but i'm sure that the others that are on the call now will be able to do a, a great job and and again i'm i'm accessible by email very happy to to answer questions there but I just want to say, if you're thinking about it, if you're on the fence about it and you don't know, just do it. This is one of the most amazing ways to spend two months. If you can afford to take the time, there is no more of an exciting and eye-opening wildlife experience that you can possibly have but doing something like this. It's, it's going to help you whatever career you decide you want to go into. You know, you'll have stories that no one else will have you won't regret doing something like this that's for sure um, if you're international and you have questions about you know how does it work how do i get into it uh, what kind of visas do i need how do i go about that process i know kim is very capable of answering those questions but i'm also here and, and happy to to chat through it um, there's lots of different opportunities with bushwise and say i really enjoyed the in-person course but the online courses are a great way to get started and you know they're included with the in-person courses but if you wanted to start by doing an online course that's also just a really cool way to spend time adding to your knowledge and developing your interests on the side uh, while you do you know while you go about your normal life until you can get to the point that you can be here and doing a full-time course if you're in south africa already and you're thinking about doing it then you know we look forward to meeting you and having you here i work with all of the students on the courses we develop storytelling skills, we develop uh, social media skills, we develop writing skills, because really those are huge parts of being a, an effective guide. If you've ever been on a tour, probably the number one thing that you would remember is how, how good the guide was at translating that information to you and making it an exciting experience. So, I mean, congratulations on making the first step on being here and having this conversation and joining us. And I really hope that um, in the near future, I'll meet some of you. I would say questions, but go ahead and just email me if you have any. Um, as you can see, my email address is again down there at the bottom. And I really appreciate everybody joining me um, and joining the rest of the team on this call today. And hopefully I'll be meeting you soon. Okay. I'm going to pause my sharing of my screen. See if I have one more. Oh, this one's a photo. Um, all right. So hopefully one more second for you to see my email address. Pause. Um, and then I just need to out how to end my call. Thanks so much. Awesome. Well, I hope that um, you all found that as uh, informative and eye-opening as what I did the first time I heard that talk. Um, I just absolutely, uh, yeah, I was, I said, there's absolutely no way that we can not have that talk at um, at this event today. Um, so we made a plan to make it happen pre-recording, but Annie very kindly offered her email address. I've also popped it in the chat box. So if any of you do have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to her. I'm sure she'd love to chat. Uh, she has some 
um, really wild stories. Not all of them were included in the presentation today, um, but Annie's always up for a, a great chin wag um, and is a, is a fountain of knowledge. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to her. And now I'm gonna hand over to the, the one amongst the roses today, I suppose, Trevor. Um, Trevor is the head of Bushwise Online and he's responsible for all of our wonderful online courses. Um, we do have um, shorter online courses that you're able to do, as Annie mentioned, um, kind of separately, if you aren't sure if this is a direction that you wanna go in, but you kind of wanna dip your toes in the water and see, like, is this for me? Do I enjoy this? Um, so Trevor's responsible for all of that. Um, and he's here with us today to talk a little bit more about Bushwise Online. So Trevor, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm just gonna hand over to you. You know the drill. <laughs> thank you, Amanda. Uh, thanks, Emmy, uh, Emmy, sorry, Kim, and obviously Sophie, uh, and Maria in the background there. Um, and welcome. Thank you, folks. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So give me two seconds. I'll figure out how to share my screen, and then I shall proceed. Uh, so just bear with me for a second or two, folks. And <laughs> it's vanished. Okay, I'll come back. Minimize. Sorry, folks. I'm almost there, folks. <laughs> no stress, Trev. We just we just chatting on the on the chat group. No stress. There we go. See, even for an old an old person like me, I can still figure out to do these things. You're allowed to You've laugh, audience. You're allowed to laugh, audience. <laughs> All right, good. <clears throat> Let's see if it'll load. Yeah, there we go. All right, folks, as you can gather, um, I'm here to chat a little bit about the online courses. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, proud to be here today, um, rubbing shoulders with uh, Sophie, one of, uh, one of the students I trained many, many years ago. And obviously, Kim and I have worked together for many, many years. But with that being said, let's have a look at the Bushwise online course. All right, how it works is basically, We've broken it up into sections so that um, <clears throat> if you wanted to spread it over a period of time because of cost constraints or time constraints, you could actually do it. Uh, you don't have to do the, the different portions back to back. All right, so before we proceed um, to understand, and it's been mentioned a couple of times, particularly by both Annie and Kim, by doing the online, um, it could generate uh, that interest, spark that interest to actually come and join us and do the practical uh, uh, component for a longer term and obviously gain maximum benefit. But it's actually to leapfrog you into the actual, uh, the guiding sort of arena. All right. For those of you that simply want to do it um, for self enrichment, well, then obviously the Nature Enthusiast eight week course is the route you want to go. We discuss all the topics that were listed in um, the modules and it's broken up into. Uh, um, how can I say it? Uh, slide presentations with voiceovers, um, which you can access at any time, night or day. Um, and the beauty of it is all these studies and the reading is at your own pace. So it's not in a classroom sort of situation where you have to sit down for three and a half hours and listen to somebody talking up front and doing slide presentations, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, even if you've got a, a, a daytime job, you can put aside an hour or two in the evenings, you will gain maximum benefit um, in your own in your own time. Um, so yes, first of all, um, the core is the nature enthusiast, which takes place over eight weeks. Um, then you could add on the extra four weeks, um, which would then with the two combined will give you a full 12 week full field guiding theory qualification. Okay. Um, there are two get togethers every week. One is a masterclass where we have expert speakers that chat about various topics. Um, they are experts in the fields from elephant contraception to responsible resource management, etc. And then yours truly hosts a webinar um, going through that week's particular modules with added bits and pieces and um, lots of debates and discussions and question and answer sessions, etc. cetera. Um, I try and keep it light and fun um, instead of just being uh, a kind of like, you know, full on classroom university style thing. Um, but uh, we discuss a lot of things that are very 
enriching in terms of gaining in knowledge. All right, so we've met most of the team, so I'm going to browse through this again. You all know Kim. My absolute support in, uh, in Cape Town is Tammy, but she's also student support. All right. I need to, at this point, also make mention of a young lady by the name of Sandy, who is in the background like Maria is right now, who I tell you what is like a two right-hand man. She can really, really rock. Okay. There's myself. I've been around for a while. I've worked for Bushwise for many, many years. Also started out as a junior trainer and eventually worked up to where I am right now. Okay. And I'd like to share, just read it uh, quickly if you don't mind, folks. This is one of the reviews that we've had from um, one of our many online students. We actually kicked off online during the COVID time. Um, and it has been a, a huge success in the sense that we are just growing in numbers every single three months. And that is fantastic. Virtue of the fact that you actually have an open day, hopefully um, you guys have 99% made up your mind already. All right, so I hope you read that review because I find it quite interesting. All right, so let's just quickly chat a little bit about the Nature Enthusiast eight week course. Um, it's basically designed for anyone who loves nature and wants to learn more. All right, it's all for self enrichment, as I said, and you don't necessarily want to become a field guide, but the subjects cover many aspects that would benefit any wildlife career, like our practical courses as well. All right, I often joke with the online students and say, you know what, folks, at least when you're sitting around the barbecue, if you're from overseas somewhere and you understand the word barbecue, if you're South African, when you're sitting around the braai, um, <laughs> you guys can actually wow your family members and your folks and your friends with your newfound knowledge. Maybe discuss things other than religion and politics and sport around the campfire. I say that tongue in cheek. All right, guys. <laughs> All right. The topics, as I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. We've covered it already. Um, but it is uh, a lot of the theory is supported by real world case studies. And these are things that I actually discuss on uh, the webinars where we go through the different uh, modules on a weekly basis. <coughs> there is 24 hours support within reason. Obviously, there are time differences. Uh, from different parts of the world. So people do struggle to always log in. But the nice thing is everything we discuss is recorded and shared with every person the following day. All right. Um, I very often also, in fact, all the time, I encourage that the participants start a little WhatsApp group of their own um, where additional topics can be discussed and uh, information shared and resources, particularly links to various programs on YouTube, etc. Okay, um, it is self-paced, as I've mentioned. <coughs> Lessons of video presentations. Um, there are practice quizzes and self-assignments to try and see if that knowledge has embedded. Um, and we recommend 10 hours of uh, learning per week. Now, that's not a hell of a lot. If you've got seven days in a week, um, I think it's quite manageable. Um, and it's delivered by any one of our different trainers that we've got, okay? Um, there's no interaction, obviously. Um, it's all voice recordings, uh, slide presentations, but it's actually explaining in a little bit more depth uh, some of the concepts that are being discussed. You know what I mean? Uh, for argument's sake, we don't profess we're going to turn you into a geologist or into a climatologist, um, but certainly um, some very interesting topics uh, of debate come up. <coughs> but the way we actually track and record how you guys uh, and ladies are actually uh, managing on the course is there is a compulsory assignment uh, that needs to be, uh, um, how can I say, completed by the end of the week, or at the very least, at the end of the, uh, the eight-week course. Once again, remember, it's, it's, it's paced uh, for yourself or self-paced. Um, and once again, we expect at least a 75% pass rate for us to be able to say, you know what? You've actually gained in the knowledge that we wanted to impart. And, and then, of course, we know we've done our job correctly. All right. But what's important is this particular eight weeks is purely just discussing the theory. <laughs> Take a drink of water. Um, surrounding the natural uh, environment around us. 
that includes the animals, the birds, the trees, etc. Okay. Um, whereas the four week add on uh, to make it the full complete 12 week field guiding course is actually discussing all the skills of how to deliver and interpret it. As, um, as Annie mentioned in her presentation, these skills are something that we make you practice on a day to day basis. Okay, uh, when you're doing that, when you're coming out on the, on the practical uh, component. Okay, but in the meantime, with the interaction on online where we discuss and debate and argue points and clarify points, it's a good start. All right. Okay, um, you must be 16 years and older, okay, because um, it is designed for, how can I say, the, the, the more uh, mature student. If, you, um, if you're younger than 16, you could approach uh, Fugasa directly. Um, they've got a kiddies program, which I think we're also trying to develop um, and do similar as Fugasa is doing right now. But what is included is your Fugasa registration, which is uh, valid for a year and obviously is renewable once a year. It entitles you to the learner manual, which is a 500 page odd um, manual and a field guide study and learner workbook, which um, is an additional resource um, for you to complete. Some people are visual learners and can actually just read through, um, you know, volumes of information and retain it, where others actually learn and remember things by actually writing them down. So that's actually what the workbook is for, which also um, becomes a, a portfolio of evidence for one day when you do have to, um, do a, a practical assessment um, after you've completed all the theory components to further add um, to your qualification. Okay, so the next four weeks, which it can be purchased separate to the eight weeks at a later stage, means you will then be able to get, if you've done both, the full field guiding theory qualification. Remember, you are not a fully qualified guide until you've undergone at least a four hour um, assessment process where you'll sit with somebody like myself, yours truly, <coughs> or other assessors and guests on the back of the vehicle, where you'll drive us around and uh, stretch your stuff a little bit. Okay. These have all been covered again. <laughs> all right, so once again, I'm skimming through these folks because it has been covered. So <clears throat> once you have completed the online course, okay, and you move on, you still get a qualification or a certificate, should I say, which is uh, issued by yourself. You say that you have completed the course, et cetera. And you can use that at a later stage, if and when you decide, okay, maybe you don't want to go to Bushwise, although I'm probably shooting myself in the foot. Um, apologies for that, uh, Amanda, and anybody else for instance. Um, but at least you've got a firm grounding and you've got most of the Fugasa uh, theory out of the way. You can do your practical anywhere else. This is a golden opportunity. If you've done the theory component online for the period of 12 weeks and you come out and you do the 60 day practical course, that is why it's been introduced so that the two can actually enhance one another, particularly for those that have time constraints and obviously those that have financial constraints. All right, so everything has been sort of worked out specifically to try and cater for all the markets. Okay, and then another review. I like that. A highly knowledgeable and professional team. All right, so earlier it was mentioned that there's over 100 years of guiding experience between the, uh, the trainers. <laughs> I'll probably make up 50 of them. No, I'm just joking, folks. I look this old and gray because of uh, students that have given me a hard time. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. All right. Well, what a lovely, uh, what a lovely review. And hopefully that will reinforce your decision to actually make that step and actually get on with it. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, the best option. Will always be do uh, will always be to do the comprehensive 23 and 50 week course, but we understand that not everybody can. But once again, as I said, the 12 week online combined with a 60 day safari course um, or practical course will still afford you the full qualification. 
Okay. Um, and there's just a couple of reasons why we've listed why you might be sitting on the fence. And with that being said, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And hit the question and chat group. <laughs> awesome. Thank All right. you so much, Trevor. That was fantastic to hear from you. Um, Thank you. Awesome. Always love learning more about Bushwise Online. Uh, just a little note, Kim has had to run off a uh, little bit of an emergency that she has to deal with. Um, nothing too right. stressful to worry about. Um, but if any more questions do come through, um, Trev, I might be leaning on you for some answers. With the greatest of pleasure. No, absolutely, um, with the greatest of pleasure. Could you perhaps tell a, a little bit more about how um, how many years you spe you spent on the Bushwise? I'm sorry if you have mentioned this. I, I may have missed that part while I was answering questions. I how many years you spent on the Bushwise campus? <laughs> I might say too many, I mean. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Hence the grey hairs. <laughs> yeah. Look, I had broken service for a year, um, but um, in total, I had just over 10 and a half years. Um, my first stint was uh, three years. I left for a year, and then I came back and completed another six years. So, yes, I saw it when it was growing from a baby to this really amazing um, enterprise that, uh, and I'm, I'm happy and proud to be able to say that I've had um, the pleasure of working with people from all walks of life, uh, age groups, all sorts of things. And I've learned a lot in terms of my social skills. But sometimes you got to know when to pick your fights and when to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a value. That's that is one very transferable skill, right there. <laughs> yes, um, it is indeed. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that we have a, a Bushwise uh, veteran with us here. Um, another thing I want to ask is, I've just been chatting to Phoebe with regard to the selection criteria for the in-person courses. Phoebe wanted to know okay. if we take all uh, if we take all applicants or if there's limited positions. Um, I know that we do take all applicants. Um, we're we're very inclusive like that. But I do know that there are also. Um, uh, uh, minimum qualifications that are needed, um, criteria that need to be met for someone to um, sign up to do a Bushwise in-field course. I believe the matric pass rate is 65%. Is that correct? That is. Okay. So just to clarify, um, I'm not sure what the equivalent is uh, for the overseas students. All right. I think you need to have your O levels and minimum. Um, I'll, I'll need to double check. But for the South African students, yes, uh, matric or grade 12, obviously, with a minimum of a 65% uh, pass average. Because of the volume of work um, and obviously the intensity, a lot of folks can't always keep up with it. So we would prefer not to discriminate, but it's pointless having a campus full of people that are not used to actually, um, you know, oh, it sounds really horrible. Um, to apply themselves academically um, because through their schooling career, they haven't really applied themselves. So what's gonna happen is if we accept anything less than that, unless of course there's some really special reason why, um, you know, like for argument's sake, dyslexia or you know, something like that, um, we would still make exceptions. But the point is just this, why should we, you know, um, Build up hopes and expectations and set this young person up for a fall right from the word go. We'd rather be honest and say, look, we honestly don't believe that you're going to make it. It's not fair, but that's the reality. You know, if I had only been doing this for one or two years, I would have said, oh, no, don't worry. It's been 10 years that I've witnessed it. Over the years, the weaker students academically, um, they just don't last. And halfway through, they fall apart and they leave anyway. So regrettably, that's one of the things. Of course, the other thing we want is somebody that's got at least one year's driving experience with a manual gearbox vehicle. One year driving experience plus a valid vehicle license and has been driving for at least one year. Remember, we are not a driving training school. We we're expecting you to be able to drive already, albeit with a bigger twice a vehicle twice the size than what you're used to. We don't have the time in such a compact um, uh, course to spend four or five hours a day driving around in circles to try and get the people 
to practice gear shift and braking, etc. All right. We don't expect you to be a seasoned professional, but you should know which, where is the brake pedal and where is the clutch pedal. And now you may laugh. Most South Africans have grown up driving cars since a young age and um, <coughs> still haven't got their licenses and stuff, but they can drive. However, a lot of uh, folks, particularly from the States and very much so in uh, Europe, they only drive automatic vehicles. And now you put them behind a stick shift or a gear shift and they are lost. Okay, so that's all we ask. I do, I do remember that when I lived in the States, finding out that the, no, the default was to, to have an automatic. And it was very impressive if you drove a, a stick shift. Uh, so by default, I was a very impressive human being, which I loved. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this place. This is great. Um, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. That's awesome. We haven't had any more questions. Um, look like it. Okay. Come through I see there is one um, yes. with regards to the payment plan. Yes. Uh, Lucy, sorry, there I cannot help you. I can only suggest that you get hold of um, uh, Kim via her email and she will answer you straight away. That, that I can assure you. Um, you know, I wasn't involved or I have not been involved with the finance side of things. My role was to make sure that the training was of a certain standard and it remained. Um, so give her a shot. She'll be, uh, she'll be on your case straight away. Absolutely. Oh, I see that. There's another question. Echo, echo what Trevor said. Um, Phoebe says she's very glad that she's been driving a manual. <laughs> Phoebe, we're, uh -huh. we're very glad that she's been driving a manual too. Um, yeah, and then we did have uh, just a couple of questions that I want to touch on, um, just because I think they're they're valuable questions for everyone to hear. They have been sure. answered. Um, Tom asked about vaccinations and which vaccinations would be necessary to get into the country. Okay. Well, uh, that, that they would have to check at the embassy, all right? But I would imagine things like yellow fever um, is probably a prerequisite. Traveling anywhere from Europe or the States into Africa, you need to get a yellow fever jab. Um, in fact, maybe Sophie can answer that better. Sophie, would you mind being able to add some light? Hi, Trevor. You caught me just as I've eaten a sneaky biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, uh, no, no problem. So I'm delighted to say that my internet has stabilized. Um, okay. Actually, for South Africa, you don't need yellow fever. So oh, yellow no, fever you don't need for Kenya. So if you want to do any travel between Kenya, um, you do need yellow okay. fever. To Kenya, Tanzania, I believe you need yellow fever. For South Africa, you don't. Um, okay. When I was first coming over, I don't think there were many extra vaccinations that I needed other than the ones I already had. I think you need a couple of the hepatitis vaccinations. Um, but the best recommendation that I can make to any internationals is go and visit your local travel clinic or your local general practitioner, your local doctor. They will be able to give you a detailed list of vaccinations. Um, but yeah, for South Africa in particular, you don't need yellow fever unless you've right. been to a yellow fever um, area before, in which case you'll already have it. Uh, and once you've had the vaccine, you just carry your yellow card around. Um, but in general, for South Africa, it's it's fairly standard stuff. I think it was just hepatitis you needed to make sure you were up to date with. Thank you. Sophie. And apparently, according to Kim, you don't you no longer need a COVID vaccine as well to get into South Africa. So that has also changed. Um, thank you so much, Sophie. Sorry to you. Um, <laughs> to, no, to no, help. thank you. <laughs> Go back to you, join your biscuit. <laughs> um, okay. um, we have a, another a great question actually from Marla. I've never, we've, I don't think we've ever had this question at a Bushfires Open Day and I'm now wondering why we haven't because it seems like such a logical one. The question is, do I need to have specific school subjects to apply for any of the courses? No. You would expect, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say perfect fluent English but you must be able to converse in English adequately, all right? So even if you've got a really heavy accent uh, or whatever the case is, but you can still converse in English, that's all we want. That's fine. Because obviously the guiding community, everything is shared in English. All right, if you've got a, a foreign language like French or German or Dutch, that's an added value. Definitely, if you can speak those languages, because there are certain lodges and operations that only focus on certain markets, for arguments like the Dutch market. So if you can converse fluently in Dutch, when they've got mostly just Dutch uh, guests, well, it stands to reason you don't talk in English, you talk in Dutch. 
but generally speaking, the only prerequisite is decent English. Awesome. That's that's fantastic. And I think that's also something that is um that was great to to flag. Thank you, Trev. Um oh, yeah. Pleasure. English is, uh, is, is, is an important part because I, I obviously believe that the course is run in English. So um, being able to kind of, I guess, understand and, and speak relatively um, good English yes. is, is important. Um, awesome. Cool. Okay, I am just checking. Oh, we've got another question here from Carmen. Um, what malaria precautions, if any, do uh, would one need to take? Um, do you have to leave the campus on off weeks during the field go? Because a double barrel question. What malaria precautions are needed? And then also, do you have to leave the campus on off weeks during the field guide course, or could you stay? Okay, so let's start with the first question. All right. Um, uh, South Africa is considered by many countries overseas still a bit of a, a, a malaria. Uh, how can I say hotspot? All right, I can honestly say in the likes of the area, yeah, there, it's been years since there's been a malaria incident. Regardless, you will need to speak to your GP, um, who will then advise you or recommend which of the uh, the prophylaxis to take. All right. Um, regrettably, we're not in a position where we can say, ah, you don't need this, or you do need this, and we recommend that. We're obviously not qualified medical practitioners. Your best bet would be to speak to your, your GP uh, or your family doctor, and they will um, they will then advise what you should and shouldn't have. Okay, it stands to reason, of course, when you're out in this part of the world, things like uh, insect repellent and wearing the right clothing and stuff, um, and covering up sensitive areas like bare feet and elbows and whatever the case is, that stands to reason. That's that's a logic. Okay, um, and obviously um, we do advise in your travel kit bring a mosquito net, um, but generally speaking, um, you, I would say you're quite safe. It's when you travel across the border on your off weeks because you want to take a bit of a holiday and you end up in the likes of Mozambique or Angola, or whatever the case is, there malaria is rife. So you have got to be quite careful if you're crossing borders to spend your off weeks um, to go and explore Southern Africa that you make sure you are taking proper lessons. As far as the second question is concerned, right, it's actually a very, very good question. Um, you're allowed to stay on campus during off weeks. Okay, you can come and go as you please. The only difference being is at Mishlashla, because we send all the staff home on off weeks so that they can have a bit of a break, you would need to provide your own food provisions and cook it yourself. The ones that are on the wildlife campus, because they have a communal kitchen and actually not only feed our students that, uh, that stay there, but also their campus students, you can still eat from the kitchen, um, the usual two meals, which is brunch, and then obviously dinner. But there is kitchen facilities at Wildlife College where you can cook your own food if you want. There's fridges, there's gas stoves, there's kettles, toasters. So you can make yourself a snack or whatever the case might be. I hope that answers the question. Gas stoves, so you can you can cook during load shedding. <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> more advanced than other places in the country, let me tell you. Um, I can tell you what happens is they generally just because people are lazy and they don't like to cook, although they like to drink beer. Okay, that's a South African thing. Okay, I'm just throwing that in. There's a thing known as a braai or a barbecue that you'll find <laughs> they'll buy <bry> every night. <laughs> So they have an excuse to drink lots of beer and not have to watch television for the next day. Okay, tongue in cheek humor again. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, that's awesome. Um, we actually have an, an online specific question here for you. Um, right. Right from forward, um, I believe their name is. Thank you, Ford, for your question. The question is: When I finish the Pegasa online course, what certificate do I get? And is the uh, and I think it's does the certificate allow me to study further with Bushwise as an apprentice? Absolutely. Okay. So what will happen is <coughs> uh, Fagasa will load you onto their system as uh, qualified as a theory apprentice field guide. Okay. You can then approach uh, Fagasa. Ah, well, if you're going to do the theory um, because you're a core student and a book for the 23, that online isn't any event included. It's free of charge. But if you are wanting to break it up in terms of periods, uh, when and when not, um, you will still get 
a Fugasa theory um, certificate and you'll get a Bushwise certificate also confirming that you've completed or successfully completed the online exam and the course. So you'll actually have two and you can obviously bank those and when um, circumstances change in terms of your income and your ability to get away uh, for 60 days or the 23 weeks, we will take you happily because you've actually done 90% of the work already. Brilliant. Well, that sounds like a sounds like a winning plan all round. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Well, I don't think we have any other questions and we are almost out of time. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much, okay. Trevor, for joining us again. It's always such a joy to have you. Love your energy, love your humor. Um, love learning more about Bushwise from you as a very seasoned Bushwise veteran. So thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you have able to have a lovely beer and possibly even a bribe this evening. <laughs> I hope you could only see what's going on next to me. <laughs> Is it next to me, I'll keep you quiet. Nothing. Okay. The fire's going. The fire's burning. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Well, there we go. There we go. True South African style. Right. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yes. I think okay. there's one more. One more question forward. Yes, uh, thank you. The 60 day placement, is it paid or as it at own costs? Um, okay. Trevor, do you want to take that one? All right, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but for the 60 day course, there is no placement option, okay? If you're doing the 23 week course, there is a placement option for an additional six months to make it the 50 and that, um, you obviously it, it's a different rate for the for the year when you um are at a place if that's what i think you're trying to ask all right the placement takes you on as a staff member uh for a temporary period uh of six months of so that you can get work exposure and mentorship some people do uh some of the lodges do give you a small gratuity uh or a stipend to help you through the the month but you actually don't get paid a salary or a wage. It's only once you've been appointed full time will you be um, will you be able to get a wage or a salary. If that's if that's the question you was trying to ask. I th yes, I think I think that's right. Um, and just a reminder that um, uh, Sophie had a very good strategy there to kind of treat it as a job interview and um, work towards getting employed full time by her placement. Um, absolutely partners, beautiful which, beautiful analogy yep 100 uh, absolutely so i think with bushwise um i actually said this to you i think it was common earlier um with bushwise as with life in general i think it's very much a case of you get out what you put in um so mm -hmm. if you are invested and dedicated and you put in the hours and the enthusiasm and you work to develop yourself um you can't go wrong. yeah you exactly. can't go wrong. the world is your oyster um Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Trev. I will let you um, hop off to um, to your, your Saturday evening plans. Sophie, thank you so much for joining us again today and pushing through with your um, your African internet issues. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful to have you um, at your first ever Bushwise Virtual Open Day. Hopefully we'll have you with many, many more. Um, and a huge thank you to Maria, who has been operating all the, the screen sharing and whatnot behind the scenes. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to take a moment to um, do a little housekeeping and wrap up. Uh, just a reminder that we are offering, as a um, as a result of your attending today, we're offering you a reduced deposit of 8,500 Rand or your local currency equivalent, um, which needs to be paid by the 31st of January to secure your book, secure your booking. Um, you can chat to Kim about more, more details for more information with regard to that. We've also listed the different uh, currency equivalents below. And limited scholarships are available um for people who attended the open day today um and for those who signed up so if you are not if you were not able to make it for whatever reason but you do receive the recording you are also eligible for this offer um so do reach out to kim to find out more and see what she can do for you um i think that's it so thank you so much to everyone for joining today it's been wonderful to have you we've had a very very engaged audience um which is wonderful um i see yes okay great there we go uh wish to ask more leave an email where we can ask more questions so um forward you can email kim at kim at bushwise 
www.co.za. Otherwise, you can reply to the email that will be landing in your inbox in one minute's time. So any questions, just feel free to hit reply. Otherwise, all the information that you need should be in there. Um, thank you so much, everyone. It's been a fantastic open day. Love the energy, love the questions, and look forward to seeing you all online or on campus soon. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Cheers thank all. you, Amanda. Have a good one. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Thanks Amanda. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 I changed from my career path from retail into being out in the bush all day. That's when in 2006 we set up um, Bushwise and the idea behind it was to not only just get them a minimum qualification but to add in all the components that makes them really employable and really make them the best they can be in the industry. I always wanted to work in the wild. I'm not I chose to be a field guide because I've always loved wildlife and nature. Decided that's what I wanted to do. We are a dedicated team of professionals that have a student at heart value. We are a team that really lives for the success of our students, and that really goes into every decision making that we're part of. Oh, it's an amazing experience. It shows that Bushwise has the best quality trainers as well. I got my degree in conservation ecology. Through my degree, I found a passion for the social side of conservation, and Bushwise seemed to meet the standard. So, yeah. Seeing their growth not only in their knowledge and their skills, but also um, how they grow as an individual, for me, that's most rewarding. As we not only are we um, guiding and giving opportunities to, for young people to get into industry, but we are really supporting and mentoring uh, young people um, to grow within themselves while they're with us, of course. Needs to be in line with what FRAGASA stands for, and Bushwise meets that, those requirements. They are in line with the gold standard of, of, of training guides, and so we're very excited to have them on board.